for the Cougs on the road tonight inside the KFC Yum Center where Louisville has been lethally good. They have not lost three games in a row, the Cards, since 2011-2012 season. So something's got to give tonight for either team, and we'll find out right away here. Louisville in the home whites going left to right on your screen. SIUE in the road reds with a little pizzazz on the side there going right to left on your screen, and Louisville scores right away. And you know, Jeff, that's one thing that if I'm SIUE, I am like, let's go. Louisville's coming off a, a loss to MTSU, um, you know, where they haven't been great defensively, so I'm, I'm attacking them tonight. SIUE, the same starting lineup from the loss to Iowa State. Keeping this group together for the second time this season. Zimbabwe gets the early turnover and going all the way to the 10 as Morgan Jones, the graduate student from Florida State. Take a look at the Louisville starters. They went back to the bigger starting lineup tonight. This group in its fifth game as the starting five as they move Liz Dixon back into the, the starting lineup. Yeah, and I think it's one of those things where, especially when you transfer new people in, um, you know, it's really still kind of the start of the season, and Jeff Walls is trying to figure out how to put some pieces together um, to pull out some wins. So, and we know Mikasa Robinson is not playing tonight, so that has a big impact also as she has been starting. So hopefully we see Liz have a big game tonight. And right away, Liz Dixon getting after it under the glass. Olivia Clayton whistled for the foul underneath on the scrum for the rebound. Two early fouls on the Cougars, but Dixon's free throw rattles out. Liz Dixon, of course, a key figure for this team from a leadership standpoint, experience standpoint. This is her fifth start of the season. And she makes the second free throw. Yeah, Liz Dixon is one of those veteran players who um, you know, knows what she needs to do to get in the game, and she's just got to figure out a way to get some rebounds and make the easy shots and putbacks and play good defense. Louisville showing some pressure here. They're gonna make SIUE work for everything here tonight. That's been something that Jeff Walls has really emphasized is ratcheting up the intensity and finishing games. Louisville has played well enough to win a lot of the games that they've lost this year, only to see things fade down the stretch. The cards aggressive out of the gate tonight and Carr splash down from three. She has been excellent this season from distance. That's her 23rd tray of this young campaign. And Chrislyn Carr coming from Syracuse, she's a scorer. She knows how to score and she knows her role on the team. And you know, nice extra pass for Morgan Jones. We saw Morgan Jones attack the basket and get some easy layups, but she decided it was best for her to kick, kick it to her teammate and way for Chrislyn Carr to knock down the open three. Great start for Louisville. Making its first two field goals, getting to the free throw line. SIUE led by a fantastic story. Samantha Quigley Smith, who at just 22 just became a head coach at the NAI level in St. Francis in Illinois, in a school that has a lot of family ties for her, had tremendous success then at the D2 level at Lewis University. And just last year in her first season at SIUE, as a long three rattles out, Quigley Smith and her squad, 13 and 18, they made their first conference tournament in three years. And the DePaul grad has SIUE feeling much better about its program here, but they're gonna need to get things going once league play gets underway as Cochran goes all the way to the basket for a lay-in, and Quigley Smith calls a quick timeout. It's nine nothing Louisville, just two minutes and change in. changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. That's v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Back here in Louisville where the Cardinals are off to a roaring start. SIU's first four possessions included three turnovers and a long three-point attempt. And that is how Louisville is out front. Just two and a half minutes into this non-conference matchup inside the KFC Yum Center in downtown Louisville. 
Starting to get a little chilly out. Holiday season is here. And Jeff Walls is coaching a Louisville team, Jess, that is out of the top 25 for the first time since 2016. But just looking at his career record, they know what they're doing. And surely the conversation now is, look, you know what we expect of you. Here's what you need to do to get right. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, he's one of those great coaches that, you know, he's going to figure it out. But with this team, with all the transfers, there's just some pieces that he's trying to tweak a little bit. He's trying to get, um, you know, all the players who are new to fit into his system and how he rolls um, and to make them buy into the culture that he's built here for the past 16 years. So I have no doubt that, you know, they'll still be a contender at the end. But it's one of those things that just might take a little bit more time this year. A whole lot of star power on this team as Cochran collides with, I believe it was Clayton. And that was a hard collision there out front. And Cochran has whistled for the foul. And it was actually Anna Blank, the freshman in for SIUE. That is a big collision as Haley Van Lith gets a rare block underneath. Yeah, we usually talk about her offensive skills, but she's pretty happy with that block there. <laughs> that is Haley's second block of the season. And anyone who knows Haley Van Lith knows that she is going to talk a lot of trash about that block. <laughs> yeah, yes, she is. And, you know, that's one of those things, though, SIUE has to keep attacking her um, and try, try to get around her and some, make some open shots to get this game going for him. There's Blank off the inbounds. Out front for SIUE. Picks sixth in the Ohio Valley Conference. Three ball from the corner is the first bucket of the game for the Cougs. And it's Molly Sheehan, the sophomore from Illinois, with the splash. Beautiful shot by SIUE, and that's one of those things that w when you're down by this much and playing a Louisville team, you have to hit the open shots, and she knocked it down right there. And two early fouls on the Zulu Tata. That is a problem as she is the leading scorer among the players who are available for SIUE. Van Lith tried to slip that through the crowd to Dixon. It ends up back with Jones, who almost was able to dump it off to Cochran, but the foul out front stops the play. And it's the first foul on Sheehan. You know, I like I like the start that Morgan Jones has have brought. We talk about her offensive so much, but she is so long and lengthy. She can get in there and get steals and create easy layups um, from her defense. So that's one thing that I've liked about her so far in this game. Jones just already stuffing the stat sheet. Four points, two rebounds, two assists, three steals in the first four minutes. Now five points. And Louisville's lead is back to 10. And Coops knew that this was going to be a tough one. Played a tough schedule. It's all to prepare for conference play as Tata's jumper is no good. It's Carr. All the way to the rim. Jones, the easy lay in. Louisville's getting a lot of good looks early. And as the three is off, a quick shot from the Cougars. And Louisville already three layups among its field goals tonight. Three of the five made shots. That shot there was no good. That was blank. A foul underneath. Going to be on Carr. As Tata is going to come off pretty quickly, just three minutes in. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. 
Lois, tough jumper there off the top of the backboard. And flipped up and in by Duckworth on the putback. Nicely done there by Destine Duckworth. Van Lith, just off, but picked up by Cochran underneath. Great offensive rebound by Cochran. And, you know, that's one thing she needs to do. She needs to rebound the ball for Louisville to be successful. And that was a great offensive rebound put back for her. And there's a steal out front by Jones. And what a start this is for her. Four steals for Morgan Jones and nine early points as the Cardinals open up a 14-point lead. Sheehan. Tuckworth out front, guarded by Cochran. Cochran draws the charge. And Morgan Jones making her defense, defense create her offense. Like I said earlier, she's so long and lengthy, she can get in that passing lane and make it easy for her on the offensive end. Great start to this game for Morgan Jones who has been one of the best players in the ACC in recent years. And would love to have a big game here to bounce back just two points against Middle Tennessee. 0 for 3 from the field. Sydney Williams in the game for Louisville. And SIU right now just needs to settle down a little bit. You know, if I were them, I would make Louisville guard the whole 30-second shot clock. Because in the MTSU game, Louisville really didn't defend that well. So MT SIUE just needs to settle down some. It's Josie Williams. I'm sorry. I know a Sydney Williams. Here we are. <laughs> Brain playing tricks. I made Josie Williams, a graduate student, transferred in from Utah Valley. And it's already a career high steals, by the way, for Morgan Jones in the first quarter. How about that to start <laughs> things off on a Tuesday night? Eight turnovers for Edwardsville. The three is long. It was Sylvie who tried it. Louisville will bring on Nyla Harris. And if you're Edwardsville, Jess, what, what do you think these conversations is? We're talking about eight turnovers, settling a lot for long distance shots at just two scores and 15 trips so far. What, what are they trying to get through to the players from the sideline, you think? Yeah, like I said, I just think they need to settle down a little bit um, and try to make Louisville do things they don't want to do. Morgan Jones coming out, starting excellent on defense, doesn't help things for them. Um, but, you know, just playing their game and try to get a little bit better each possession. Now, here's a tough one for you. Do you give that charge in the hustle chart credit to Harris or Williams because they both drew it and went down together? Either way, it's a turnover. And Louisville will get the ball back. as SIUE now up to nine turnovers here in this first quarter in just seven minutes of action. Nice backdoor cut there. Nice backdoor and nice pass by the freshman, Nyla Harris, who does not play like a freshman. She's played some big minutes in these past few games. And, you know, usually as a freshman coming in, you, do, you don't click right away. But she's definitely got the confidence and starting to click a little bit more each and every game. Two and a half minutes left. And Louisville just expertly picking apart SIUE. It's a 12-2 run, an 8-0 run over the last two minutes. And another offensive foul. Was Azaria Moore. And Marissa Russell will come in for Louisville. And you know that with this start, Louisville can afford to empty the bench a little bit. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, the past few games, 
He's played eight, nine deep and just trying to get a good click going and get a good feel for his team um, of who he wants to play more in the big games. Foul out front. And it's on Tata, and that is another big one. Tata coming into this game, leading her team eight points a game, six and a half rebounds a game. And she's got three in limited minutes so far, just three minutes and change. So SIUE trying to find the right mix here. As Russell gets the first one to fall. Louisville's lead is up to 19. The Canadians' second free throw, no good. Almost came up with the offensive board. So Sheehan. There's Lois guarded out front by Van Lith. Long three is just off there from Sylvie. Trying to get out in transition. Van Lith with a nice find to Harris underneath. Beautiful pass by Van Lith and Harris with the finish. You know, I, I really like the tempo of Wolves right now. They're getting after it on defense, not making anything easy, and then finishing off the offensive end. 14 of Louisville's 26 points so far coming from layups. As the cards getting a lot of good looks at the rim. And forcing a ton of turnovers. Let's take a look again at that nice find from Van Lith. And you know, that started with Josie Williams right there, setting the screen for Van Lith to be able to come off of it. Van Lith is such an offensive threat. You have to pick her up, and she makes the nice assistant pass, um, you know, for Nyla Harris to get the easy layup. Seven different cards have scored, as Williams couldn't get that to fall. Still on the glass. Outside the car, good ball movement to the corner. It's a splash down for Louisville. It's Marissa Russell from the corner. And that's beautiful basketball right there. You know, you've got a good shot, but you make those extra two passes to get a great shot, and Marissa Russell knocks it down for him. Well, if Louisville was hoping to treat this game as a get-right game, they are certainly leaving no doubt here. Up 24 just in the first quarter. It's good shot there from Sheehan gets it back to a 21-point game. Sheehan's got six of her team's eight points. Williams flips it up and in. Ooh, just about doing whatever it wants in this opening quarter. There's bodies on the floor. <laughs> Lois drew the foul. It was on Josie Williams. Jeez. And Lois's jumper is no good. Carr with the rebound. Final 10 seconds of this first quarter. Van Lift pull up jumper. Got it. Good finish by Haley Van Lift. And wait another, wait another time on the clock. It has been all Louisville in this opening quarter. A ton. Very much in control, and a big reason for it is Morgan Jones' defense. A career-high five steals, 11 points, getting some layups. And Louisville very much in control through the first 10 minutes. They were two points shy of their season high in a quarter. They set that to 35 against Longwood. One of their five wins this season is Harris with a tough take to the basket. Gets them 235 here in the second quarter. And SIUE now. I think coming into this game, obviously you want to be competitive and see if you can hang around and maybe make a game of it. But an experience like this, of course, is invaluable getting ready for conference play. You're just trying to run your stuff and play against a very high level of athleticism and competition. Definitely, and it doesn't make it any easier for SIUE 
for Louisville to be coming off of a loss, a big <laughs> loss by M MTSU. Um, you know, they've got a little bit more to play for now. But it, SIUE, you know, they just have to pretend that the score is 0-0, zero to zero, run their sets, do some good things on defense, do some good things on off the offensive end, and, you know, and just try to get a little bit better um, each and every possession. Destin Duckworth back in for SIUE. As the Cardinals have a chance here to go up 30 in this second quarter. Van Lith, and the ball knocked away. Carr for three, got it. Chrislin Carr, second three of the night. 24 for the season. Cleared away Louisville's best shooter. Yeah, throughout this season, she has really found her stroke, and her teammates need to continue to get her to the ball, get her the ball to be able to shoot it like she has been. Duckworth guarded out front by Williams, 10 on the shot clock. Sheehan tries to get to the rim, was cut off by Russell, and she stayed straight up there. That was good defending at the rim. Carr tried to reward her back in the other direction, but I don't think they were on the same page. She is, that's just in rhythm. Perfect pass by Nyla Harris. Like you said, she was right in rhythm. I mean, first three games, nine points per game. Last six games, 11 points, 11.7, 47%. I mean, that's what she needs to do for this team to be successful. And her teammates have to realize she's shooting the ball extremely well, day in and day out. So they need to get her some extra touches to be able to keep doing what she's doing. It's always going to be a tough shot among the trees as Harris comes up with it. Here's Carr. And Jeff Walls in his 16th season, 78 and 23 after a loss. They are 10 and 1 in the last 11 games after a loss. Van Lith with the bucket there, but they lost back to back games against Ohio State and Middle Tennessee coming into this one, so they're trying to bounce back and avoid their first three game losing streak in a decade. And I think it's fair to say they're well on their way to doing that. But Jess, I'm guessing the practice was not the most fun experience for these young Cardinals. Let's just say I am glad I was not on the team <laughs> after those two losses. But yeah, you know, Jeff Walls and his staff is really just trying to get this team to match Chris Carr with another three. I mean, to be her teammates and to be able to find her like that, it says something about everyone, and you know, she just needs to keep shooting the ball like she's. Game in the conference tournament. And don't be fooled by some of those games coming up in the future with, you see Washington, you see Louisville, but don't be fooled. Liberty also is a powerhouse. This has been a very tough schedule across all swaths of college basketball for SIUE. Going on the road to Hilton to play Iowa State is not fun either. That was last week. The Cardinals, as my partner here, Jess Lemley, said, are angry. Grimacing so much they're showing some teeth. <laughs> as the card's up 37 points here in the second quarter. A foul underneath on Harris. And that's one thing right now, SIUE has to pretend, score zero to zero, and just, you know, run their sets, try to get something going just for their confidence. But ultimately, this game, SIUE is trying to get just a little bit better each time. They, all these teams that come in in the non-conference want to be Louisville. They want to build a culture, and they're trying to do that. So SIUE just needs to settle down, play some defense. I'm sure uh, Louisville right now is going to run some offensive sets. So let's see if SIUE can get some stops here. Quigley Smith coming from a big basketball family. Just about everybody in her family touched the sport. Her sister played at DePaul, same as she did. You know DePaul is an excellent program on the women's side. Women have not been the best of late. As Williams punishes inside for a bucket. It's getting a 
chance to extend her minutes tonight. As Louisville gets another steal. Carr out front. Her sixth game this season with three or more threes, Chrislyn Carr. And it looked like she wanted to take that one right yes, there, but she decided, let me, let me pull it back and run something. Carr to Zayana Walker. Inside to Williams. Williams had to get something up as the shot clock ran down, almost got it to fall. Ball, back iron, pulled down almost by Carr. Sylvie knocked it away. This one, Carr was trying to grab that second rebound. That's a stat. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta let her have her stat. Surely there is a fan fantasy manager somewhere who's frustrated that Chrislyn Carr didn't get an extra rebound here. Walker jogs it up. Freshman from Wichita, Kansas. Part of yet another impressive signing class that Louisville just churns out every year as Lix Dixon from the elbow, a nice smooth jumper. Yeah, Liz Dixon, we've seen her play in the paint, back to the basket, but it's nice to be able to see her step out and hit that 15-foot jumper. Louisville just five points away from a season high. First half points. Foul out front. That was on Marissa Russell, her first. Team second. Olivia Clayton. This is Anna Blank, the freshman in-state product. A three ball from Moore is good. The third three of the night for SIUE. And that's one thing Louisville has not done very well in the past few games is guard the three-point shot. So I think SIUE, that's why they came out of the gate trying to hit some open threes and get something going, which they haven't been able to, but very nice shot right there. First points in seven and a half minutes for SIUE as Walker gets on the board. Nice looking jump shot for her. Just her third made field goal so far in her young college career. Looked like she's made way more than that with that release. Clayton swatted at the elbow by Harris, who has been very effective since coming on. And the Cougs, again, just running their stuff, trying to get good looks to just try to execute what they can. Yeah, definitely, and Nyla Harris playing a little bit back on her, so she made the open read and knocked down the three-point shot. Also in for SIE, number five, Tosha. Good opportunity here for Louisville to Extend its bench, get some minutes for a variety of players. Cochran, the up fake from distance, driving all the way, gets her own rebound. Jones back on the floor. Down to seven on the shot clock. Cochran, what a tough finish. And Cochran's been really working on her ball handling skills in the off season, so that shows it right there. Catching it at the free throw line, rip and drive, and Finishing it, I think she wanted the and one, but <laughs> the refs did not call that for her. Tata's got to be careful. She's already got the three fouls. Although at this point, you're just kind of playing with the fouls you have, I yeah. would assume. <laughs> I mean, look at that rip and drive by Cochran. Olivia Cochran, six points, three boards tonight, all three of them on the offensive glass. And a nice give back from Dixon to find Walker. And that was excellent two-player stuff from the cards. First half high this year for Louisville. 
with time to add to this point total. Lois loses the defender. Couldn't get the jumper to fall. Here comes Russell. Jones hit hard there. Popped right up. Foul is on the floor. Second on Lois. Team second. Jones, Russell from the corner, got it. And Marissa Russell feeling herself on the three-point line tonight. The card shooting just 31% from three coming into this thing, a five of seven in this first half. Tata, the jumper is no good. Blank thought about it herself. Final minute of this first half. And there's another steal by Jones. All the way to the rim herself. 13 points and six steals in this first half for Morgan Jones. Again, Morgan Jones is so long and lengthy. Just being able to get that hand in the passing lane, be able to get the steal. Her defense, like right there again, her defense creates her offense for easy baskets. Walker pull-up jumper is no good. Dixon got the offensive board. I think Jones is going to get credit for a steal there. It was her deflection. Cochran came up with it. But that would be one of those stats that the assistants are charting, and they'll be happy with the effort as Cochran gets the roll in the lane. And Louisville, for a team that has struggled at the outset of this season, has absolutely squashed any doubt of any lingering concerns like a hippo eating a watermelon. I mean, this is an absolute thunder in here in this first half, and that's where we'll leave it through 20 minutes. Louisville 62, SIUE 11 at the KFC Yum Center. Stay tuned, we got some good stuff. Gary Gar, I don't know what who that is. Should I know who that hey, is? Let's he play, is not let's play yes. some basketball now. Get back to what we know. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get back to what we know. We'll come back to this. Warren Zevon was another guest. That's a good one. As, uh, Warren Zevon, of course, revealing his last album, a great story of musician, great musician, and a great friendship with David Letterman as the basketball game has continued here. Louisville and SIUE here inside the Yum Center. SIUE and its Road Reds, Louisville and the Home Whites. Haley Van Lith isn't going to score many easier than that. A lefty layup has her at 12 points here on Tuesday night. And SIUE knocking down their first shot. And, you know, that's one thing Louisville has to stay disciplined. They're up by a significantly amount, but you know, to come out and let them get an easy first shot, when you start getting down the road in ACC play in the NCAA tournament, you, you can't let a team come out and knock down an easy sh shot like that right after halftime. Here's the trivia answer, by the way. Bill Murray and Don Herbert. There you go, I know who Bill Murray is. There you go, <laughs> I'm glad you do and so do I. I do not know who Don Herbert is and I should. I feel guilty that I don't. But that's your Tuesday trivia, courtesy of our producer, Morgan Brooks. Liz Dixon gets the lefty layup to fall. Morgan Jones picked up her seventh steal, by the way, in the process. She's got eight right there. And the card's still getting after on defense here in the third quarter. And one for Madison Webb, the junior from Bedford, Indiana. In the post with a nice little shot, and we'll get a chance to put the exclamation point on it. 
and nice footwork. Cochran just coming down with her hand. She did not agree with that call, but you know, the and one. First trip to the free throw line tonight for the Cougars and Webb converts. Another offensive foul on Louisville. SIUE so far this season has really been a second half team. They've been much more efficient scoring in the second half. Close results earlier this season uh, against Eastern Michigan. Close against Xavier as well more recently in Thanksgiving weekend. The Coops just trying to get going here in their second year under Sam Quigley Smith. And off to a strong start here, a 6-0 run for SIUE here to start this second half. Cochran, good effort there, saves it. Worth driving to her right, trying to find Dixon. And I think she wanted a foul there. You know, yeah, yeah that's one of those things about Van Lith. She is a competitor. When she drives to the basket and she thinks a foul needs to be called, she tells the refs. <laughs> and you know, that that's one of those things though that sometimes if you get the wrong refs, they, they might not like that. So she's gotta be careful with that a little bit, but yeah, she did not like that call. Angelica Suffren, Kevin Sparrow, and Tony Patillo on the call tonight for the referees. Dustin Duckworth's third foul. Liz Dixon. Couldn't get the first one to fall. Dixon, five points. And a couple of boards so far tonight. Over. Eight of 12 now from the free throw line. One of my biggest gripes, Jess, about the uh, Twitter verse is when teams aren't making their free throws, fans wondering if they practice them. And I have never <laughs> been to a basketball practice where teams don't shoot free throws at some point no, yeah. in the session. I, I can promise you. Woo! I don't know what that was. <laughs> they got it going a little bit too fast, but yes, I can promise you every team practices free throws. And when players get up there, I promise you they are not trying to miss. <laughs> <laughs> Just sometimes the ball does not want to go in the basket. Mary Sheehan brings it up for Edwardsville. In front on a blank. To Sheehan here. Sheehan does have a couple of threes, trying to get a third. Front iron. Carr. And this nice move jumper. Guys. Nice shot by Van Lith. And you know, I, I laugh about that up court long pass where they throw it out of bounds, but you know, in the MTSU game, Louisville threw those passes a few times and turned the ball over and it led to a loss That's for them. So that's one thing in the third quarter, they cannot get undisciplined. That was an excellent pass ahead from Haley Van Lith. Louisville firmly in front. Strong start. At this point, it's not a start of her career. She is in the midst of an excellent career with Louisville, carrying the Cardinals to the Final Four last year, and 14 points to go with five assists tonight, three rebounds as well, all in about 17 minutes of play. So we'll be monitoring her for the next few minutes to see if she can get over the 1,000 point mark tonight. Yeah, and I always wonder if, you know, does she know she's at that mark? Yes. I feel like she does. <laughs> Some players. We wondered that. Do you remember earlier this season we were wondering yes. if they knew she was on the way to a double-double? <laughs> And I feel like, you know, some some players don't know, but I feel like she's one of those players who, you know, 
loves to win, wants to win, does everything she needs to do to get the win for her team. But in the back of her mind, she knows where she's at. And I would guess that there are people on the bench who know too. Who are probably tell yes, who are telling her like, look, you got three points. Go do it. Get on the uh, get on the prestigious list. There's Tata's three miss. Chrislyn Carr brings it up for Louisville. Pearl there from Jones to set up Cochran. And Jeff Walls loved that pass right there. We heard him from over here yelling, nice pass to Morgan Jones. She's done some great things on the offense and defensive end, but to make that extra pass and not just take it to the basket herself is really an improvement for her. 16 assists tonight for Louisville on 30 field goals. Jones has four of those helpers. Tata just has had a rough night. Foul trouble as that pass ahead to Jones kept in after she bobbled it. And those assists from the cards just show how well they're sharing the basketball and how unselfishly they are being. Car ahead to Cochran, the easy lay-in. And Louisville just scoring in droves tonight. And way to run the floor by Cochran. Car again. Thought she had Van Lith for a second pull-up jumper. And it rolls in. Chris Lynn Carr with 11. And good decision by Carr not to force it to Van Lith, who was a little bit in front of her, but Chris Lynn Carr knows she can shoot the ball, so just pulled up for an easy two. 11-0 run here from Louisville to balloon this lead even more so. She and trying to find that. Pass along the baseline, we'll take a break here. Louisville off to the season, of course, as is the case just about every year since Jeff Walls has taken over, very high expectations. We're picked to win the ACC in the preseason poll, but obviously, as the non-conference has showed, it's going to be a tough task for Louisville to maintain its level. A lot of teams, good teams in the league, might be the best the league has been in a while. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, that's why, and he says it too, he makes his non-conference and beginning of the season schedule so difficult to get these players ready for the ACC time. Because when you get to ACC play, anything can happen. Everybody is good. And you can't go out there and not play good and get a win. Molly Sheehan, three for six tonight from the field, leads her team with eight points. Just like SIUE in a zone defense now against the cards. Back into a 2 3. And Haley Van Lith still on the floor, three points shy of that 1,000 mark. I think they just want to keep getting minutes together with Chris Lynn Carr, Van Lith, and just keep them playing as a group. Definitely, he is trying to build some chemistry right now with Chris Lynn Carr, another knockdown three. Four three-pointers tonight for the Syracuse transfer. And she just makes it look so easy. Smooth delivery. Van Lith into the lane, draws the foul. Was on Madison Webb, her second. And Van Lith will go to the free throw line for the second time this evening. And Haley Van Lith got off to such a slow start last year and then just barreled in to ACC play and was excellent in the NCAA tournament. This year off to a much better start, but still a little cold from three-point range, and you have to think she'll get going from deep as the season progresses. Oh yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll get going on the three-point range, but you know, she loves to win, and she does whatever she needs to do to be able to win, and just seeing her grow throughout the season and how her game has evolved is really impressive. She didn't like that call. No, she did not. <laughs> the free throw is knocked down. 
by Sophie Lois, the sophomore from Springfield, Illinois. Second one is also good. Lois with seven points for the Cougs. And here again, Liz now one point away from her thousandth career point with those two free throws. Good work there between the bigs, Harris and Williams. Williams with two assists tonight. And Harris with eight points to go with seven boards. I like Louisville's offensive play right now, but if you're her, Haley Van List teammates, you have to know she's one point away from, you know, her thousand career point, and you better be getting her the ball. Got to figure as soon as that shot goes in, whenever it is, she's coming immediately off the floor. As Williams can't get it in. Yeah, I would assume so on that one with the score right now. She in. In front, this is Duckworth. Lois tries to pull up, and Webb jostling with Van Lith. Van Lith wanted a foul. Yeah, and that's what I talked about earlier. She will let the net refs know when she thinks they have not called something correctly, <laughs> um, which might ultimately sometimes get her in trouble, but she's not afraid <laughs> to speak her mind. A little conversation there with Kevin Sparrick, but... No dice. This is Van Lith. Pull up elbow jumper. Rattled out. Final 90 seconds of this third quarter. And that's one thing I think when Haley Van Lith continues to evolve and continues to get better is that the refs aren't always going to make the correct call in your eyes. And that's just something where you have to let go and you have to continue to play. Um, because down the road, if you stop play and try to think you got a, you got a call from the ref and they didn't call it, um, that could lead to a bucket for the other team or something that you're not expecting. So, you know, as she continues to evolve, hopefully she'll um, grow into that a little bit. Williams, quick back door there from Van Lith was there. Comes back around to get it. Williams in the post up. Almost lost it out of bounds, and it's still knocked away. 3.2 seconds on the shot clock. Sideline out of bounds play here. One of Jeff Walls' specialties. Yeah, he loves drawing up his plays. And you'll hear coaches talk about the importance of these set opportunities. And there it is, perfect pass, perfect finish. All to perfection, Van Lith to Williams. And Louisville with 48 points in the paint to SIU's two, which it's been a big goal of Louisville to score in the paint because you're not always gonna hit outside shots. To be, so to be able to score close to the basket on easy, easy, easier shots than the three-point shot is a very good stat line tonight for the cards. And there she is, Haley Van Grand. The junior surpasses the 1,000 point mark with that layup. She has been so, so good for Louisville. And it was only a matter of time before she got to the big mark. And that is definitely something to be proud of. Jalen Brown, the freshman, came sprinting on. She was so eager to come on, the ref <laughs> pulling her off. But Van Lith comes off to a big round of applause. I would assume that will be the last we see of her tonight. 18 points, six assists, four rebounds, two steals for Van Lith. A very efficient seven of nine. 32 points between her and Carr. And just by the bench's reaction, they knew. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure they were definitely keeping track of that. And she and down to five seconds left, tries to drive in and is fouled. Foul it was Dixon and Harris, I believe, in there. So now on the floor for the Cardinals, 
You've got Dixon, Harris, Russell, Walker. And I'm trying to see the other one in here. It's Brown. It is. As the buzzer sounds here on this third quarter. Louisville helping Haley Van Lith get over the 1,000 point mark. 10 more minutes to play here in Kentucky. This list, Angel McCautry, Asia Dersh, Arnie Schimmel, Maisha Hines Allen, the list just goes on and on and on of impressive names who have played for this program. And I don't think anyone would be surprised from the moment she set foot on the floor here at the Yum Center that Haley Van Lith has joined that elite company. No, and it truly is a great accomplishment and all smiles on the bench right now from her. And here's a funny way the world works. Jalen Brown coming on for Haley Van Lith here to take her out for the evening. And Jalen Brown went to St. Francis Academy this in high school as Angel McCautry. So there you go. And she just knocked down a three-point shot. <laughs> right off, right <laughs> off the cue there. Perfect timing. Sylvie for three on the other end. Pulled down by Brown. Brown into the lane and just lost her footing there. It's Diana Walker, Nyla Harris. Jalen Brown, Marissa Russell, and Liz Dixon on the floor for Louisville and for SIUE. It's Sophie Lois, Molly Sheehan, Azaria Moore, Macy Sylvie, and Walter, excuse me, top top for SIUE. He's a freshman. For this Louisville squad, a couple of them on the floor, three of them to be exact. Part of another standout recruiting class for Jeff Walls. And it's all about regenerative learning for these players. Yes, I was just about to say that. You know, it's good to see fourth quarter, you know, a little under nine minutes left, some other players getting in and seeing if they can get some confidence in themselves, some freshmen on the floor, um, and some players who just need to get a little bit better to get a little bit more playing time. And a runner there spinning out of a challenging situation. Nice shot from Macy Sylvie, her first bucket of the night. And that's one thing though, you know, when you have some players who don't play big minutes in games, get in these situations and get a little bit, you know, too excited, throw some bad passes, but really, I mean, these minutes matter for these players. It might not look like it on the scoreboard, but Jeff Walls is really taking this time and seeing who he can play in big games and who will take care of the ball and who will defend for these last 10 minutes. Heavy collision between Tata and Harris. And the offensive foul is on Harris. The offensive foul on number two for the car is Tata Harris. It's her second foul. The team's second here. Tata, that's a heavy hit. Fortunately, it doesn't look like she caught her head on the floor. But Tata has had a tough night tonight. Four fouls, that's a risky maneuver there to try to draw the charge on a cut. As Harris comes up with the loose ball on the other end for a layup. A nice steal by Nyla Harris. We saw Morgan Jones with all those steals earlier. I'm guessing it's something they worked on in practice this past week. Getting in that passing lane, making their defense create their offense instead of vice versa. And I know it's such an elementary part of this game, Jess, but I know it's something coaches harp on. If your offense is maybe not feeling super efficient, maybe your shot selection isn't great, Coaches are going to talk a lot about getting those transition points, those easy baskets to maybe alleviate some of that stress. Yeah, exactly. I mean, every team's going to have their down 
fall shooting night where it's not going to go in the basket. So to be able to jump in the passing lane and get some easy steals, which create transition back baskets, um, to try to get the offense going a little bit, you know, that's what they're really looking for and that's what will help them down the stretch as well. Tata, the leading scorer for SIUE, gets on the board here in the fourth quarter. Cruz just navigating, as we said earlier, a brutal non-conference schedule. Tons and tons of road games. Eight of the 11, they're in the midst of a six-game run of road games. Luckily this one just uh, about a four hour bus ride down I-64. Tots had a monster game against Xavier. 16 and 14 for her, but that early foul trouble really made it difficult. As Josie Williams checks back in for Louisville. Yeah, and that early foul trouble by, you know, SIUE, it, it's something that gets you out of rhythm. You have to play players that you usually don't play. And um, But, you know, they came out looking good in the third quarter. They just were so far behind already, and the cards have really intensified their defense. Um, there was no coming back from it. But I'll say one thing about SIUE, they have not quit. They are still going 100% trying to guard the cards, making some good decisions. Hit a couple open shots. Let's see if she can get this one to fall. There good timing go. on that one. <laughs> Lois for three, her second of the night. Hopefully, though, SIU can look at this film in the upcoming days and see some good things that they did, see some things they need to improve on, but also look at how Louisville played um, and really talk about you know how that's what they want to get to at some point. Haley Van Lith, who, uh, whose stat line I just read to you as if she was headed out for the rest of the game, is back on the floor. Williams with a good find there to Walker. Walker thought about the jumper. Instead, nice little two-player game. Van Lith on the cut, turning and finishing. is a tough finish, Jess. She's a tough player. Free throw rattles in for the lefty. 21 now for Haley Van Lith. Sylvie on the drive, nice move to get some free room and got the layup to fall. Sylvie with four points here in this fourth quarter. And SIUE not backing down, still attacking the basket, a nice finish. And, you know, we talk about Haley Van List points, but I like her six assists. I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive to have 21 points, but also know that, you know, her teammates like Chrislyn Carr um, have been making shots today. So that's pretty impressive by her. 98-32, four minutes and 44 seconds to go here in the Ville. It depends on who you ask, whether it's truly ugly sweater or holiday sweater, whatever you want to call it. It's ugly sweater night here at the Yum Center, and I don't know, that might be my favorite right there. The, uh, I like the lights. I like the medieval look of the holiday sweater. They're everywhere around this arena. We didn't wear ours. <laughs> no, we did not get that memo. <laughs> Coach JP with the cute little sweater. Love that. It is that time of year here in the Yum Center, and 
Obviously everywhere. Very yes. exciting time of the year. You got your Christmas shopping done yet? Um, I'm three-fourths of the way done. It's still early. You still got <laughs> two and a half, almost three weeks. I have nine nieces and nephews, so I have to shop early. That's a lot. Yes, you do. Jumper yeah. there short from Webb. And something that we are constantly thinking about is watching these teams operate, not just in close games, but in most games, in not every game, they're always trying to learn things. We talked about SIU and for Louisville, it's nice for the younger players getting the chance to play here. The three ball from Josie Williams. It almost flashed the grin there for a second, <laughs> but Chris Lynn Carr on the floor with them. Haley Van Lith was on the floor with them before the timeout. The work that goes into having the understanding of the offense from a veteran while you're on the floor together. Yes, and like Josie Williams coming in, knocking down that open shot. You know, these last few minutes that players who don't get a lot of playing time always can come in, gain some confidence in their game, give Coach Wall some confidence to put them in in tighter situations than this. So it really does matter. Um, it's one of those things I think it's great to have games like this, and that's why he sometimes you know, schedule some teams where it should be a blowout just to get some other players some good playing time. Jalen Brown, the jumper, is no good. And I, I thought it was also interesting that Stephanie Norman running the timeout huddle. I know they rotate in who's in charge based on what, whatever the scout is in game situations like this, a chance to get that experience. Lord knows the run of assistants <laughs> who have gone and gotten head coaching jobs out of this program is growing by the year. Yes. You know, some great assistant coaches that Jeff Walls has brought in. Um, and that's one thing. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Coach Norman has actually had coached two games, I want to say, at Louisville uh, because Coach Walls was not able to. So you, you just always want to get that some experience um, in a game like this. Coach Walls is like, look, you know, I know what I'm doing, but let's see um, what other assistant coaches can step up as well and put some plays together um, and run some defense. So Louisville was zeroing in on their program record field goal percentage of 69% set back in 1988. So we'll see here in these final three minutes or so if they can ratchet it up. It's at 67.2 right now for the cards. Brown. Four on the shot clock. They gotta get something off. Russell to Williams. I don't think Louisville knew it. And that Tom offense took a little while too long to develop. Yeah, and just like that, you know, Brown's a player who doesn't get to play a lot. Um, and that's one thing. She she needs to know the shot clock as to everybody else. But, you know, just getting her in there and getting her comfortable with the game um, is good for her. She in for three. That's long. Scrap underneath more ended up with it. And Sophie Sullivan, the sophomore from Villa Park, Illinois, is in the game for the first time tonight for SIUE. And SIUE still pushing it out the cards, making them play defense. The ball might not be going in the basket right now, but they're still playing hard. Walker all the way to the rim and got it to fall. Walker with six points off the bench tonight. And she's one of those other players who, you know, Mikasa Robinson went out in the MTSU game. Coach Walls looked at her and said, are you ready to play? And that's one thing. You never know when you're going to get your moment. So rather you're player one or 15 for the cards, you always have to stay ready. Feed in there from Walker to the quick post up from Williams. Final 71 seconds here at the UM Center. And Louisville jumped on this game from the very outset. It was never really in question as the cards raced out to a 33 to 8 lead in the first quarter. They outscored SIUE 29 to 3 in the second quarter. And one minute, Those two 10 game. minute spurts just made it impossible for it to be any kind of game. Yeah. 
Well, Jess, your thoughts on tonight's game from both perspectives here, SIU and Louisville? You know, if you're the Cards, this is exactly what you need it from every single player who walked on that floor. Coming off Ohio State, coming off MTSU losses, they needed a big win. They needed to be able to shoot the ball. Just They needed everything to be able to connect. And for SIUE, it was a good learning experience. They'll be able to watch film in the next few days and not only watch what they did, good and bad, but also watch how Louisville played and how aggressive they played um, and how well they played in this game. So kudos to both teams for playing hard. Louisville coming out with the big win, though. SIUE up next for them, Western Illinois, part of this stretch of road games on Sunday. That's at uh, 2 p.m. Central time. For the Cougars. And Louisville will be, of course, at Kentucky on Sunday. I don't think anybody in the Louisville fan base has that game circled. I don't think anyone talks <laughs> about it. No one's ever discussed that matchup. And, you know, that's one thing I hope these Louisville players realize going up there is it is a big game in this state. Um, and you've got to bring your best to be able to win. And that is where things will end up. Louisville 105, SIUE 32. From the Yum Center, the Cards in control from the first tip. And they dominated tonight, beating the Cougars of SIU Edwardsville. They brought out the Santa gear for Louis the Card, the ugly sweaters. And by the way, Morgan Jones, not exactly in the